Stop the Bleed is, is a global empowerment and training program targeting the concept that bleeding is the number one cause of death after injury that is preventable. So if we can train people to be not only capable of intervening when they see bleeding, but also empowered to do something when they see something, then we can prevent death, we can intervene and even save a lot of lives. It's an important program that is easy and straightforward, but also quite profound in its effect. If you're a parent, if you're a teacher, if you're involved in a community event, or if you live alone and you're just alone a lot of the time, anytime you have a risk of an injury, whether it's a paper cut or something much more severe, the techniques really do make sense. Holding pressure, packing a wound if it's large enough, and then putting on a tourniquet, those three steps can be imperative for anyone around you. So you may not think that it'll affect you, but once you learn the technique, you're going to find yourself in situations where you can be called upon to act, and it's important to know it. I think most of the time we've seen Stop the Bleed implemented by people who are trained, so EMTs and paramedics and nurses and doctors at scenes, but I've also seen it used by people who are treating themselves, and that's the that's the one of the coolest part about Stop the Bleed is you can intervene on yourself if you have an injury. And again, we've taught people who are doing garden work. So I go to local garden centers and Home Depots and DIY stores, and I offer the education to the to the staff there, the safety officers, and they love it because they can then teach their own people how to intervene. We also are working with students and student groups and nursing schools and medical schools and people who are on the edge of being healthcare. So they're safety officers at corporations or other manufacturing plants, and they may be out there in the community. Um, I'd love to see organizations like drive share or ride share organizations, or even food delivery services, because they're driving all over the place. They can intervene when they see something happening. So really, it's a variety of injuries that can be household, um, industry, or educational environments. They can be out in the woods or in the city. They can be literally anywhere. So I think it's that important. We've had a few people who've gotten shot in our community, but who've learned the technique or who've been near someone who learned the technique and they can intervene. Um, I actually had a patient who came and saw me. I didn't know this happened when it happened, but um, she'd come in She'd been um, injured by um, a blade of a, um, it was a, a lawnmower blade or a, um, a rotary cutting blade. And she would cut herself on it. It was not on, but she still cut herself pretty deeply and she was alone. And she had a son who'd taken a course in scouting and went to the basement and found her and she was not comfortable and it was just miserable and really upset. And he intervened, took it right away. And then she called me a few weeks later and said, listen, I just, I forgot to tell you this. But this happened and my son was able to intervene with me. So now he's like the hero of his scout troop and it all, it, it worked out for him. But I think what's important is that when someone's in the community and they had someone expose them to stop the bleed, or if someone is in a school and they learned it and they can use it, that's what's important. So telling the story of someone who learned it is so important. We have so many ways we can share these experiences. And, you know, the G.I. Joe comic book is just one of them the testimonials people give us in the news, things like when we hear it when we're a trauma surgeon and we hear someone using Stop the Bleed in the community, it makes such a difference when we get up in front of people and say, you may never use this, but since we know injuries like this are so common, you may. So it's important to learn it. A lot of people realize that what they're learning in the class is something they already know intuitively, and they're being, effectively, they're being given permission to do it on somebody else. So it, they're being empowered. So they know the basic steps of pressure and um, they know the pressure points when they were younger or maybe when they learned in a first aid class. But when they learn pressure, then packing, then tourniquet, they know there's a three-step process. They know that they can call for help. They know that they have the skills for this. So really so many people go, oh, it's that easy. And the answer is yes, it's that easy to save a life. The advice I give is that, and this, it sounds very intuitive, but if you stop the bleeding, 
then you'll see less blood. I don't like seeing my own blood, believe me. I'm, I've, and having, you know, cut myself many a time when I was a kid or when I was working in a restaurant, I sliced half my finger off with, a, with one of those meat slicers. And you better believe I was not happy to see that. But as soon as it happened, um, the, the chef in the restaurant grabbed a towel, came over to me, held tight on it and said, okay, we're going to be okay. And then just gave me the calm. And that was what important. Well, that's what was important to me because it made me go, okay, I'm fine. I'm not going to pass out. I'm not going to have a problem from this. He just saved me from having more bleeding than I needed. So if we can preserve blood, we can preserve the need to feel squeamish because we're seeing blood. So I think everyone's a little bit um, trepidatious or a little bit reticent to get involved when they don't want to. But really, if you're in the setting and someone's life is threatened, the adrenaline takes over and you just do. And it's important to do that, whether you're, again, a parent, a teacher in an industry or in healthcare. So if you can intervene, you should. My name is David Shapiro and I'm a trauma surgeon. And I know how to stop the bleed, but you don't have to be a trauma surgeon to stop the bleed because you can stop the bleed and you can stop the bleed and you can stop the bleed and anyone out there can stop the bleed. So go do it, learn it save a life.